Hi there again. This is Perusia. I am OJ Buckleeg, and this is my daily 40 day Lenten reflection thing where I pretty much just reflect upon the readings of the day. This is day 10. Ooh, man, uh, so what, 30 more days to go. Let me dive right in. So there's a lot of guilt going on in the readings today. A lot of like, oh man, I suck and I got I to be condemned. So in our first reading, which is coming from Ezekiel, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now the house of Israel. Is it my fault that it's, that, that it's unfair or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, is it because the iniquity he committed that he must die? But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness as he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he surely would live and he shall not die. So, there's a lot of, uh, oh man, what's going to happen to me if I do this or if I do that? And then, in the response for Psalm, If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? So, it's setting us up for kind of the answer, which is in the Gospel. So we fast forward over time, and when we get to the Gospel, from Matthew 5, Jesus sets it up with, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay? I'll fast forward a little bit here. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court, otherwise your opponent will hand you over to the judge. And a judge will hand you over to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. So that's the bit that I kind of want to really dive into. You see, that little bit there is one of our cornerstone reasons for believing in purgatory. So I'm going to get now apologetic here. I haven't really done that in the other entries uh, in the past nine days, but today it's our first kind of apologetic topic. Let me, let me read that again. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you've paid the last penny. So, how does that relate to purgatory? Well, in purgatory, when we get sent there, it's because we still have all these things, all the sins, all the consequences of sin in our lives, and nothing impure can enter into heaven. So purgatory is where we pay off those last pennies. You see, different from a few days ago readings where Jesus says, if you do this, you'll be thrown into the fiery pits. That's not what he's saying here today. You'll be thrown into prison but you won't be released until you pay the last penny. Now, you cannot be released from hell. Once you're in hell, you're in hell. There's no, there's no uh, get out of jail card for hell. So this must not be hell that he's talking about. This must be some other place other than hell where you can pay your debts. That's what we call purgatory. Now, why the necessity for purgatory? Why do we have that middle ground here? Well, I think it comes down to really just God's mercy. See, like I said a moment ago, nothing imperfect can go into heaven. So that means that if we're not, if we're not playing a perfect game here on earth right now, and at the moment that we die, dude, <laughs> then we're practically guaranteed hell. And the thing is, none of us is. None of us are. Is? Are? Hmm. That's already not perfect grammar. We'll figure it out later. None of us is playing a perfect game on earth, so we're all pretty much doomed. So it's very highly super godly merciful for him to create this place where we can still process, clean away, and be made perfect so that we're ready for heaven. And, well, why not just let us instantaneously be cleaned out? 
why not, okay, you were not that bad, so we'll let you into heaven. I know you're kind of imperfect, we'll let you in. And then I'll just clean you up, right? Like we'll just pass through like a, a heavenly car wash that washes away our sins. Well, then it becomes unjust, and God is always perfectly just. See, our sins have consequences. And some of those consequences are, are temporal, which means it occurs here on earth. So for instance, if I decide to go break the rules of traffic and I go speeding 100 miles an hour, okay, well, God might forgive me at some point if I ask for true forgiveness, but there are going to be consequences such as getting a speeding ticket, potentially. Uh, there are consequences such as potentially hitting someone, maybe injuring myself, injuring others, or worse. There are just temporal consequences of these sins. Um, drugs, let's say, drug abuse. Uh, many people that I've known have gotten past the drugs thing and they were able to reconcile with God and say, God, you know, forgive me of the abuse that I put to my body and the, the hurt I caused all these people. And God, knowing that they had a contrite heart, would have truly forgiven them, right? However, the effects that they've done to their body, forgiveness won't do anything with that. It's still going to play itself out, whatever harm they've done to their body. Uh, whatever mistrust that they've sown with the people around them, that mistrust may or may not go away. So, just like there are temporal, physical ramifications to sins, there are spiritual ramifications to our sins that need to be paid off. Just like I'm paying off that parking ticket, just like I'm having to regain this other person's trust, there comes purgatory, where all the spiritual ramifications of our sins are given the time it needs to play out its natural consequences so that we are justly given what we deserve in the negative sense, I guess, in that way. So that's sort of, hopefully, an okay explanation for the necessity of purgatory. Now, another note about purgatory that I want to throw out there you know, as I explained in other videos, and in filming this video, my, my father just passed away recently. Uh, a few months ago, a couple months ago in October. And people will go up to you and say, oh, don't worry, he's in a better place. Now, you know, we lovingly tend to tell that to people that have lost someone uh, to help console them, right? But I think there's a little bit of a danger to that. If we just tell them, and this just happened yesterday, let's say someone just passed away, don't worry, they're in a better place, they're in heaven now. As Catholics, we have to be a little bit careful because what if they're not in heaven? What if that person is actually still in purgatory? And when they're purgatory, they need as much prayer from us as, as, as we can. They, they need masses offered for them to like kind of speed up the process. I don't know exactly how the mechanics work up there, but we know that those are the kind of things that from our, from our teachings tell us that, that we need to give. So we're almost, uh, by assuming that they've already made it to heaven, we are almost shortchanging them of, of the blessings that we can give upon them to help hurry that process up. Personally, with, my, with my, my own dad, I am asking him, hey, send me a sign. Let me know you've made it. You know, g give me some sort of miracle. Give me some sort of clue that you've made it through already. Or do I got to keep praying for you? I'll keep praying for you just in case because I haven't received any signs. I think that's a safer approach because they need us. They need uh, our prayers and supplications. And I don't know if somehow you feel so confident that your loved one has made it to the other side, then they'll be praying for us. And that, that, that's awesome. So that's all I got for today. Hopefully that helped it even in some way. Hopefully the people that, that don't think about purga purgatory too much, maybe your Protestant friends tell you like, oh, you guys are weird for having purgatory. That hopefully cleared up some of the confusion of why you even have a purgatory after all. 
Until tomorrow or until whenever you click the next video where I'm in it again. Because <laughs> I don't know when you're going to watch this. It's been my pleasure and a blessing to me to be able to keep doing this for this time period of Lent. Again, do not smash the like button. That's horrible. You might break your phone. Just gently tap it and then click press share and comment about you, some confusions about purgatory that you have. If you need to hear. Anyway, that's all I got. Till next time, God bless.